Bob, how would you describe uh, the kind of work you do? Uh, well, right now, of course, I'm, I am retired, but what I do mainly is I work for Operation Gratitude as a gratitude ambassador, spreading the word of what we do, which is send packages overseas to the men and women who are fighting all the time. And also, we send them also to our first responders here, both police and fire. That's what I actually do. What sort of things are in these packages? Uh, we, ha we have lots of things. We have uh, games, we have books, uh, we have cosmetics, we have uh, shaving gear. But I think the most important thing of all, I know the most important thing of all, are the letters from children. And they simply say, I pray for you, come home safe, you're a hero, and we welcome you home. And when you speak to the military guys and gals that have gotten these packages overseas, invariably, that letter either goes in their breast pocket, over their heart, or in their helmet. Because it means so much to them to think that someone cares that doesn't even know who they are. This group that you work with, uh uh, wings over Wendy's, you must meet a lot of well, World War II and uh, Korean War veterans. Do you get any interesting stories? Yes, we do. Uh, yeah. We have a number of really interesting characters. One is uh, Lee Levitan. Lee flew a B-26. B-26s were notorious during, during flight training and they flew out of Tampa and the saying was one a day in Tampa Bay because they crashed so often. And what's interesting about Lee, Lee's a kid from Brooklyn. Uh, the Coney Island area, and he says that when he when he took he took a transport out of uh, New York, and he could actually see the lights on in his parents' house, which he said was sort of a melancholy thing. Uh, and then he went into war, and I think he had about World War Two. World War Two, yes, sir. He had about 33 combat missions, and on one mission, the flak was pretty heavy over uh, Austria, and the plane jarred, and he was a navigator, and his pencil fell. And when he bent down to pick his, up his pencil a piece of shrapnel came through just about where his head would have been. So if it wasn't for him bending over to pick up that pencil, he tells the story that he probably would not be here today. And he's a wonderful lecturer. He does part of what we call conversation with heroes, where some of these guys go to schools and they tell this story. Not to tell the story really of combat, but tell the story of love of country, love of your neighborhood, and the dedication that it takes to be a good citizen and make a great country. That's what they go to tell. What's your name? Lee Levitan. I was in the Army Air Corps. I was in the Army Air Corps from, uh, let me see, 42 to 45. I flew 35 combat missions stationed in France, dropping our bombs on Schickelgrube so that uh, we uh, took care of that. Did you feel a special mission or uh, a, a purpose in trying to defeat the Nazis? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I was aware as a youngster uh, from 36 on or so exactly what was happening in Germany and what was being done to the Jewish population. And uh, it just made me feel a lot better about what I was doing and in that we were successful with it. Because if we were not, I don't think any of us would be here today talking about, for the most part, the Jewish population and what uh, Hitler's mission was. And you hear about it today, I hear about it today, what his plans were had he come over here. He would have exterminated every Jew on the planet, I believe. So thank God for the way it worked out. Israel is still in jeopardy and has been all the years. There are a front line in, in that region of the world. They're, they're right there. And uh, I support Israel with every fiber in my being. For they're a front line of defense in that region of the world. So we have to be very thankful and very supportive of Israel, which we are, and I'm proud about our country being that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure.